perhaps something we may be looking for, and maybe we can add some insight and promote some awareness on this question. So, women in need of knowledge. Everybody needs knowledge. But we've been, you know, I have to tell you, having this industry, we've been left behind a little bit. But those days are over. There's a new sheriff in town, and it's all women. <laughs> <laughs> At any rate, so a little bit about Cindy. You can get up close and personal in her bio found within the contents of that folder. She is an author. Again, she's amassed many licenses. She's highly educated. I always make the joke that she's a doctor in money because she didn't like school, but she continued to go to school 10 years after she left college. So she's a, you know, an author. She's been featured on all these financial platforms. She gets invited as a keynote speaker, whether it's Fox, whether it's writing articles for Forbes, CBS, the CW, and the NBC. She's hosted a radio show. She has, you know, she's an author now. And she has many accolades. And but Cindy is humble and she's full of wisdom, many years of wisdom, and it's not the books that talks to me, it's not the invitations, it's all of you. All of you were her teachers, and she listens, and she makes a difference, as cliche as that may sound. If you don't learn experience, you don't teach experience. Experience is something that you attain with time, and she's seasoned, and she's highly motivated and passionate, to make a difference, especially today, in the lives of women like you and me. So, she will come up. We are going to, you know, we're going to deliver this message tonight. And what I want you to know, more than anything, is that this is our passion. To teach, for you to learn, to excel, and to grow. It's your job. This could be a little catalyst tonight for you to keep moving forward in that direction. Because conversations cost nothing. It's closing the door that costs more. So if there's something that you think that you would like to further expand on, please continue that conversation. Our purpose, again, is to inspire and motivate through facts, not fear. Our mission is to help those build a sustainable retirement that you can be proud of, your legacy that you have worked so hard for, and you have every right to that. You have the right to know everything into a bright future. So, we are going to be covering, so do you have that little form here that I told you to pull out? It's in front of you where it has little boxes here. So, everything that Cindy will expound on tonight She'll go through it. She won't get too much in the weeds, but I'm sure there's something here that you've thought about. So as she goes to the presentation, this corresponds with her presentation. It's sequential. Check off what you might think you want to learn more about, and then if you want to continue the conversation, come see us. We also have her latest book here tonight, and we'll talk about that more in a little bit. And she has both books here tonight. Redefining Financial Literacy and the Rise of Women and Wealth. Everybody here tonight thinks about this. Whether it's tax harvesting, whether am I ready for retirement, whether it's Social Security, whether it's the risk that we face today, estate planning. We all think about this. I think about money all the time. But not in an unhealthy way. I think about my future. And we as women think that way. So, I'm going to bring Cindy up, take close attention, and I want to thank my colleague Charlene, give her a big round of applause. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much. And Harry, her muscly husband back there, thank you, Harry, for the all boxes and always help us. I couldn't do it without a team, because ladies, it takes a team. No one can do anything on their own. It takes a team. It takes guidance, and it takes people that are equally so lead the way you want to help you get to your goals. So without further ado, Cindy Kimjin, come on. Thank you. Great job, Letitia. Can you guys hear me in the back? 
Okay, great. So today's presentation, what did I decide to talk about today? <laughs> you know, the market's been really volatile. Any of you guys worried? How many of us are a little nervous? We don't want, I, I remember one of my clients just came the other day, she says, ah, I'm not gonna open my 401k statement at least till next quarter. I said, <laughs> I said, then what happens? Well, if next quarter's bad, I'll wait to the following quarter. So what I did is I sort of dedicated the presentation tonight. I broke it up in two sections. The first section is about what to do with our money. How many of us are money experts? Okay, and that's not your fault, you guys. You didn't get to, did we get taught money in elementary school? How about high school? College? So you guys shouldn't feel bad. Don't feel shameful. You know, some people come in about, oh God, I don't know anything. What's a mutual fund? Uh, how does this work? So put those inhibitions aside because you're not supposed to know about money. That's not what we were taught. And I think as I get my third book out, The Silent Retirement Crisis, I think we were rigged. It was rigged that way. Because the research says today that 50, we rank 50% in the world in financial literacy. How does a superpower like the United States ends up being illiterate? So I think the system has to change and I think it will with, with time. So what I did is I tried to break the presentation up <clears throat> into two sections. The first section, let's talk about your money. Let's talk about the market. Let's talk about what we can do to protect ourselves from these forces. How many of us have control over inflation? The stock market? The rate of return we get at our bank? Our tax rates? We have absolutely no control. But tonight, I have some good news for you guys. You guys have control. And the control you have is how you're gonna invest your money and where you can put your money tonight to hedge you from these forces, because these are scary forces. And I'm, this young lady has a pen in her hand. She's all ready to go and write down notes. So the first thing I wanna talk about is what the stock and bond model's done the last 15 years. And you need to write this down, ladies. Because a lot of us might hear things and like, well, that doesn't really pertain to me. Well, I don't know if I believe her. Um, this is too much for me. I want you guys to write this down right now. As of today, how many of us own stocks and bond mutual funds in our portfolio? Most of our hands are gonna go up, right? Okay, I'm gonna tell you the bad news first, and then I'm gonna give you the good news, because there is hope, ladies. Over the last 15 years, write that down, 15 years, if you had 60% of your money in the stock market, and 40% of your money in the bond market, and I know that's foreign. I had a doctor come in last week. I go, how's your money in your 401k? Neurologist, 30 years, you'd think she really would know. She goes, I don't know how much of my money is in stocks and bonds. I go, have you been guessing? She goes, well, I sort of talk to my friend, I take out a dartboard, and I just hope I'm in the right fund. I mean, that's, a lot of us don't know what fund to go into today. But let's go back to that 60-40. I just looked it up on my phone before coming here. And that 60-40 model has performed 1.85 per year for the last 15 years. 1.85. And what happens if you had an advisor today? What do they charge? Like 1%? What would you be left with? Oh, good, 0.85. Okay, that's the bad news. I wrote a book called Redefining Financial Literacy. And I woke up in 03 after being in the business for 17 years. I said, I want to leave the business, honey. I was like, wait a minute. Haven't you been in the business 17 years? I said, yeah, I got in the business in 1986. Does anyone remember 87? I was only in the business nine months. The stock market dropped 20% Black Monday, and I had 10 clients. I looked at all their clients, and everyone was down about 50%. I thought to myself, I don't know, Mom, if I got into the right business. <laughs> I feel like people are gonna start throwing pies and eggs at me, okay? That was a, 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 a I call it a bleep in the system. Because if you held on by January 1st, you were up about 20%. So things that drop fast, recover fast. Things that drop slow, recover slow. So, went back to work, pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Trying to learn the business, 
15 years, oh my God, I couldn't do anything wrong. The baby boomers put all their money in where? In the stock market. And the market went up every single year almost for that, from that point on to 2000. I thought I was the best player in the world. 10%, 15, 20. No, the S&P index, folks, did 17% a year. And then what happened? 2000. Remember the tech wreck? Dot com companies? OK, I lived through that. And that's why I wanted out. I was 41 years old. And I looked at my retirees who were coming to my office and saying, oh, I'm sorry. You just lost 25 to 30% of your nest egg. Great, it took me 40 years to build it. Well, that's not my fault. <laughs> Think about that. Uh, well, you're my planner. You're supposed to sustain me over my retirement. I said, yeah, you're absolutely right. And by the way, you're taking out 5%, so now you're down 25. And I went home after I had that conversation with that client. I told my husband, I have zero value. Well, wait a minute, Cindy. You hated college, you were a 2.0, and you went and got eight security licenses and a CFP, and you've been studying every day for 15 years. And now you just wanna, poof, leave the industry. I said, listen, I'll stay in the industry. Because the writing's on the wall. I think clients are gonna run out of money. Can they all move in with us? <laughs> I thought, oh great, if they can move in with us, I'll stay in the business, because I think people are gonna run out of money. What I saw during the tech wreck, 7,400 companies went bankrupt, because companies were going public without a balance sheet, and you and I were buying that stuff, because our banks were promoting it. And I thought to myself, that's either greed or fraud, I'm not sure what that is, but when it comes to my client's money, I'm not gonna be held responsible, and I'm thinking about leaving the industry. And I write about that in my first book. I had gone to Mass on um, Sunday, and there was a pancake breakfast, and my pastor goes, I, I went up to him, I go, I'm leaving the industry. He goes, how long have you been in the financial planning industry? I go, about oh, 17 years. I have no value. All I have is a stock and a bond, and you know, the way I see the tech wreck, my clients are all gonna run out of money. He goes, well, are you honest? I said, yes. He goes, are you integral? I said, yes. Because that's your value proposition. Get the back to work. I said, isn't everyone in this business like that? He goes, just go back to work. That month, I resigned after 17 years being with the Equitable. Because I heard there was other strategies that were available for investors called alternative diversifiers. So I thought, OK. If uh, my husband won't let my clients move in with us if they all run out of money, I'm gonna have to go to work. And I'm gonna find strategy. And that became my passion. So passionate about it, and I did tell my husband about 20 years ago I'd write a book, I said, I don't know what I'm gonna write about. And then one day I woke up in 2017 and I knew what I had to write about. Because it took me almost 20 years on a journey, and if you wanna hear about that journey, it's in my book, my first one, that I would start adding new asset classes to the portfolios. Because back then, and women, we all have it, use it. It's called intuition. Use it. Let knowledge embrace you. Let your intuition raise you, OK? So I used my knowledge, and I started to see things. Because it was like comparing A to B and B to C, and does this make sense? Is it suitable? Is it low risk? isn't what I really want for my clients because as a female financial planner, and if you were in my industry, you'd probably feel bad if you lost half your client's money, huh? It's not an industry for women. I understand why women don't want to get in this business. It's a tough business. First of all, you're competing with one out of five of us are women and the rest are men, and they deal with money a little different. I tend to be more empathetic and I care about my clients, so when clients lose money, I feel bad, whether it's my fault or not. So I went on this journey, took me about 17 years, and one day, one of my sponsors came into my office and said, Cindy, I think you're doing what Yale's doing, a multi-asset strategy. I said, well, maybe so. He goes, no, read this book. It's called The Ivy Portfolio. Went home for the weekend, I read it, I thought, oh my god, I called Letitia. Tish, I think we're doing this, this multi-asset class strategy. She goes, well, what is it? I go, well, Yale, do Yale does it. 
I read about it. She goes, are we doing it? I go, I think we are. So I go to the office on Monday. I go, who are my top 100 clients, Connie? How many asset classes are my clients in? I knew we were in real estate and credit and all this other stuff. She goes, you're in five. I said, oh my God, that's what David Swanson, who manages Yale. By the way, he was 41 years old. He got a PhD at Yale in finance. And he told the endowment, I want to manage the money here. And they're like, okay, David, you did good with your PhD, but you have zero experience. He goes, did you read my PhD, my thesis? And they go, okay, what was your thesis about? He goes, I worked with Harry Markowitz, the, Mar the uh, Nobel Peace Prize winner, and James Tobin, and they said that multi-asset classes are better than stocks and bonds. And I want to manage the endowment. He had one year with Merrill Lynch, and they go, well, let's make this decision. And Yale hired him, who's 41 years old. He sort of had that insight. As a man, men have intuition. So do women, but women are very keen. Yale hired him, he passed away last year. He was 67. He beat the S&P index, ladies and gentlemen, by 3% a year and a lot less risk. And guess how much income the Yale endowment took out each year? If you got a million bucks, 5% a year and sustained the endowment and beat all the indexes. Well, little did I know as these products started to come online for people like you and me, I started incorporating them, and 20 years later, I had five asset classes. I still, even though I was in five asset classes, I thought to myself, hmm, is it really like Yale? So as I started writing my book in 2017, I went back and said, Connie, I got another chore for you to do too. Oh, what you want me to do now? I want you to take five indexes and go back 20 years, and I want every single year's return, and I want to put 20% in each, and I want to know what the results are. Did it beat the S&P index or not? And I showed you that in my office, didn't I, Coletta? It beat the S&P index, and it was less risky. And then I put in these alternative diversifiers. You guys, this is exciting. The risk went down even more. So I thought to myself, bingo, I have a... Someone said a secret sauce. It's not a secret sauce because it's customized. But ladies and gentlemen, that 60-40 model that I thought was broken 20 years ago is doomed. And in fact, the research says this, and that's the only bad news I'm giving you today, that over the next 10 years, that model is going to 100-year lows, and I'm going to tell you who broke it. You guys interested in that? Not really. A little history? I'm going to tell you who broke it. It's in my third book, but I'm going to give you a five-minute narrative of that. And then I'm going to tell you what you can do to hedge you, yourself from these forces that are coming at us, because it's making us all go a little nutty. And I'm going to give you hope back into your retirement. I'm going to give you strategies back into your retirement. I'm going to give you income back in your retirement if you're open. Now, you might say, well, she talks fast. She has blonde hair, and she's from Detroit. I'm not sure I can trust her. <laughs> but listen, you know those books? Most financial planners don't write books. You know why? I'm not allowed to have an opinion. I have a Series 7. Everything that's quoted has to be research-based. If you go to the back of those books, there's 600 sources in each book. And yes, I had to hire a PhD to do all the research for me because I'm not allowed to have an opinion. The regulators really want us to bring out facts and research based on a source. Does that make sense? Because they don't want me just making stuff up up here. So I want to tell you that everything that you're going to hear tonight is research-based. It's sourced out, and it's for you. It's a gift for you. It's a gift of knowledge. It's the gift of giving you the opportunity to get empowered, ladies, because we waited 2,500 years for this point in history. What do I mean by 2,500 years? Patriarchy started about 2,500 to 5,000 years ago. Men had the money and the education. We weren't allowed to read, we weren't allowed to write, and we certainly weren't allowed to have our first credit card until 1974. Okay? So we have been, unfortunately, suppressed. And it is that weird how life works. Now, 2,500 years later, women, ready for this, ladies? You're going to control two-thirds of the world wealth in the USA in 2030. How many years... Of, is that a way? Eight. Eight? And we waited 2,500 years. Seven. Yeah, let's get our calculators out. Seven years away, ladies. 
And we are gonna, we right now are have higher education academically, both in bachelor's and master's. So if the education that was taken away from us and the money was not given to us and you have it today, there's a revolution coming. And that's my second book, The Financial Revolution Has Come. Now I was telling these nice ladies tonight that my first third of my career, I had to get married quick, let's get a ring on, because it was like this men and wanting to take me out. I, I'm a financial planner, let's go out. No, yeah, let's get married, honey. I gotta get a ring, I'm sick of that. Okay, so the first third of my career was really with men. The second third of my career, because I've been in the business 36 years now, was with men and women, but men would, women would come in and knit. Aren't you interested? Nah, my husband takes care of it. We build this Chinese wall. Nah, he'll do the money decisions for me. And then in the last, literally, from the time I start writing my second book, guess who comes through my front door now? Women, I go, where's your husband? Oh, he doesn't want to come in. He wants, I'm in charge of the money now. Oh, perfect. Women are in charge or want to be in charge or forget about being in charge, want to walk alongside their husbands or their partners, and they want to be empowered because they know that based on death, disability, and divorce, they are going to have to take care of themselves. And ladies, if we want equality since COVID hit, I didn't start my presentation yet, but I'm going there. Since COVID hit, ladies, I'm so passionate about this. We were 100 years away from income equality. When COVID hit, we're 139 years away. You think I want to wait 139 years for us to get our kids, our daughters to get equal wages? No way. How do we get equal wages? Well, 26% of Congress is women. We need to get to 51, right? We need to get empowered. You don't have to be a money expert, but you need to understand. You need to get, take action steps. This woman here, I met her, I don't know, a couple, Four weeks ago, she's been working full time for me. No, for herself. Talking about being empowered. Okay, I'm coming in again. Here's all the homework you asked me to do. Because she took action steps. She read my book. I didn't even ask her to read it. Two books, okay? I said, usually when you come in, you got to read chapters two, four, five, and seven. Because it's not about me telling you what to do, it's about you telling me and asking the right questions so you can get involved with your money. Now a lot of you are probably saying, I'm not gonna learn about money, that's okay. But I'm gonna talk about some subjects tonight and if you wanna have that continued conversation, you guys got all that sheet in front of you? Your evaluation sheet? Check the box, I wanna have a continued conversation because it is a conversation, isn't it Coletta? We don't, I mean if you like me and you wanna do business, terrific. But if you want to come in and have an hour, two, three hour conversation while I give you my time, absolutely, because that's my passion. I'm experienced, I'm established. Yes, of course, I like new clients, but I want to help one person at a time that has the courage, that has the ability to just come in and take charge. And I'll take charge right along with you, and together we can empower you. And that is my message tonight. So let's talk a little bit about women and money. Women make up almost 85% of all the purchases in the United States. 90% of married women will control all the wealth over the course of their life. And if you ladies are, you need to understand what you're doing. Last but not least, women make up 57% of college graduates and 62% of masters. 35% of women are millionaires today, and ladies, two-thirds of the wealth are going to be in your hands. And what are you going to do with that? It's a moral responsibility. I know I'm motivated. I have two children. I use fear to motivate me to create a legacy for my loved ones. It's okay to have fear, okay? Because sometimes fear motivates us. I've been telling my little ones, listen, you're waiting for mom and dad to die? Nuh -uh, that's not how it works. You're gonna have the money because I want you to create wealth for generations to come. This isn't for you to go buy yourself a new car and another vacation. When I leave you my wealth, that wealth is for you to take responsibility and manage it properly. That doesn't mean you can't have a good life, but it's about, because there's only two things you can do with money today. What's that? Save it and spend it, okay? so. How many of us feel stressed about money? Do any of us feel stressed or not even worry about it? Your husband deals with it. Does some of us feel stressed about money? 
Well, these are the statistics. More than two in five women feel money affects our mental health, both depression, insomnia, and anxiety. That's the research today. 58% of women, only half of us, worry about money a couple times a week. And with the way the markets are today, we might be worrying about money more than that. So what's the solution? The research has been that 86% of women feel that their anxiety would go down if they had a mentor. I hate the word financial advisor, okay? But if you had someone who had some level of knowledge, and I was just talking to my graphic artist that was in my office this afternoon, and you know what I told him? I said, I told my kids about my money mistakes I made. I don't say that everything's nice, we live in a nice house, we have a nice car. No, I tell them what I did wrong, what I could have done better. Because that's our responsibility to motivate and inspire generations to come. And it's, it's okay to talk about money with you and your children and the mistakes you made, because that's how your kids will learn. And sharing that is critical. So that's my feeling about women and money, and I'm here if I can help you in any which way. Um, I'm gonna talk about five subjects. Today I'm only gonna give you one tip per subject. And if it inspires you that you wanna sit down and have a conversation, come on in. We'd love to have one. And if you do have a conversation with Letitia and me, we will let you pick a book of your choice. Okay? Because we want to motivate. Everyone needs to be motivated. But I don't want to take credit. What's the word I want to say? I don't want to devalue that book. Each book cost me 250000 of my own money to write it. So I don't want you to think, oh, she's giving away a free book. That's a bunch of junk over there. It's not. It's my life. And it's for you, and it's a gift. And it's a gift of my knowledge and to help you, because I don't get any economic benefit if you guys just come in here, take my book, and leave. But that's what I'm here to do. That's my mission. I'm in the last quadrant of my life, right? Our first quadrant, our second quadrant, and our third quadrant. My third quadrant is to do whatever I can to touch as many lives as I can. I've been blessed. I've got a great life. I have two great kids. I have good health. So now I have to really focus on others and what I can do to help people out. So I'm gonna talk about, see, I'm gonna be talking about all three books today. I talked to read about women, that's in my second book. Now in my third book, I write about the silent retirement crisis because no one's talking about it and I think we should have a conversation about it. I use the word controlled capitalism and the reason I use that word is when it was controlled, people all shared in the wealth. The suppliers, the people. I know my parents were during the time it was called Fordism. Everyone could afford a car, send their kids to college, and live a comfortable retirement. That was called controlled capitalism. I think over the last 50 years, and you'll have to read my book next year, and you're all invited to my book signing. I just don't know when it's going to go public. But I think we've been living through uncontrolled capitalism where there's been an unequal distribution of wealth, and you guys know some of those guys who own that stuff, right? Yeah. Eight men dominate 50% of the world's riches today, and one of those guys is Bates and Buffett and Bozo, no, Bezo, excuse me. Did I say Bozo? Bezo. <laughs> I just threw that in, okay? <laughs> and no one's talking about this kind of risk, so I wanna talk about this kind of risk. Everyone knows, well, I got inflation risk, and I got stock market risk, and bond risk. You want to teach me two new risks. I want to plant in your mind two new risks today. Political and economic risk, and I'm going to break it down really simple. Economic risk is an, and let me know if you can relate to this, is an economic ideology of profits over people. Have you felt that in the last 30 to 40 years? They've taken our jobs away, they've taken our pensions away, they haven't given us pay increases. Who was doing that? Well, the corporations want to blame the politicians, so you guys are all fighting who's a Republican, who's a Democrat, okay? But really what's happening, and by the way, both Democrats and Republicans want decreased regulations. Because when you have less rules, like if, for instance, if I had my two kids and I'm like, hey, you live in the Cuban house, there's no rules, free for all. You kids could do what you want for the next 20 years. You can imagine what my kids would look like and be like, okay? So we reduce the rules in this country from things like political campaign contributions, like lobbyists, 
like changing the monopoly rules. Things changed in the last 50 years, and it happened while we were sleeping. I always call it that. We woke up and said, where's the money? I feel like I can't get ahead. I'm paying lots of taxes. It was free markets. We shifted the control away from the, believe it or not, away from the government. Do you think the politicians have all the control? It was shifted. Do you remember in the 70s? What was going on back then? Remember the oil crisis? How about the Vietnam War? How about the gold standard? How about Nixon? People thought the politicians were knuckleheads, which no different than they, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so they shifted the control and corporations start running our country. And guess what happened to our retirement system because of it? We all of a sudden, social security is threatened. When is it supposed to go bankrupt? 2035 to 2032. That doesn't mean you're going to lose your social code. God, I go to this event. She tells me I'm losing my social in the 60-40s too. My God, what a great night. No. If you are getting social, it will be reduced between 18 and 22%. How many of us get pensions today? Now we're going to give away gift cards. What percentage of Americans get, get a pension today? Because I'm losing some of you, so I want to wake you guys up. What percentage? 20. Well, no. 28. No. 3 percent. So what we used to depend on Social Security and pension, we can't depend on our pension. Social Security is going insolvent, and investors are going to run out of money. At least that's what they say. 40 percent of us, if you rely on, in my, this is an opinion, not quoted, if you rely on just having stocks and bonds in your portfolio. I think today more so than ever, macro financial literacy is critical. And if you don't know it, there's access to my books. And so what happens is when things go bad in corporate America, like Boeing, remember Boeing almost wanted to go bankrupt? They mismanage their balance sheets. When you have less rules, corporations in America start mismanaging what? Their money. And then all of a sudden they needed bailouts. How about the banks? Were the banks managing their money properly? No, nope, Boeing wasn't. So all of a sudden political risk kicks in. Do you know what political risk is? You guys have heard of the Federal Reserve, right? Okay, so the Federal Reserve kicks in and attempts to rescue the economy. Now think about that. The TARP money was never given back. There were more buybacks in 2018 than any other, com uh, any other year. Companies have started mismanaging their balance sheets. You wonder why your accountant's down 20% and the volatility? Thanks to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve becomes the king in manipulating stock in bond markets. So here, I live in Tustin. I bought a house 20 years ago. The interest rate was 20 years ago on that house. What do you think I paid in interest? No, it's higher than that. It was 9%, okay? And how many times did I refinance my house? I thought, wow, the government, no, a lot more went from nine to seven to six to five to two. I think my house is now at 3%, okay? We thought we were getting, that was a great thing. Well, that was the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates to stimulate America, okay? When you lower interest rates to zero, companies can be more aggressive with their balance sheets, can't they? If you say, hey, remember COVID hit? Oh, take all the money you want, no interest. Can I have a loan like that? Oh, no. We're going to need you and your kids to get this loan, okay? So there was, there was really a mismanagement of debt going into the wrong people's hands. So now you wonder, you wake up, honey, what's the bank rate paying today? Does anyone know what your banks are paying today? You're lucky if you get one. What happened? Who was lowering the interest rates? What's the name? The Federal Reserve. So over the last 20 years, I want you to write this down. Over the last 20 years, bonds have had a negative 1% return each year, okay? And guess what? I want you to write this down. Since 1780, what we've experienced in the bond market is the worst crash in 250 years. Because interest rates went to zero during COVID, we know that. I mean, you may not know that, but your bank account certainly wasn't paying interest. As interest rates rose, bonds started to crash. And the problem is, is now you have this economic risk, which is corporations, profits over people, and political risk to bail everyone out. And that has threatened the what? You think Fidelity or Vanguard? Let's give a Vanguard. Do you think they're sending you a slide like this? 
Hey, the 6040 has only done 1.5. Keep your money with Fidelity. No, as soon as it gets public, they erase it on Google. Markets have gotten more volatile. Okay, during COVID, what did the market lose in 10 business days? When Trump, we're not here to talk politics, but Trump went public and said we're shutting down the economy. That was on March 18th of 2020. In 10 business days, what did the Dow drop? She thinks 20. Who? 40%, but you guys weren't opening your statement, and so it wasn't month in yet. S&P was down 30. By the end of the month, between the S&P and the Dow, and then we had the 2008 down 57, the tech crack down 44. Is stock markets getting less risky or more risky? Well, when you go pump $9 trillion in the market, isn't that what the feds did? And the, all that money, you thought we got all that money? That went to corporations who were ready to go bankrupt. Boeing was bailed out by the Fed, not by Trump. Okay, so now you have these bubbles. And who would have thought that the market would crash this year? Of course we did. The market was up 50% the last two years. I remember I bought my home in Tustin in 2000 when my son was born. And by 2007, that thing went from 700 to $2.2 million, up 25% a year. Think about that. Does real estate go up 25% a year? What's been the average real estate increases in Southern California in the last 50 years? 7%. 7%? So when that, when that house went up, I told my husband, honey, I'm walking up the front door. I said, oh, we better take the money out. He goes, what do you mean we're going to take the money out? I said, if we don't take the money out, we're going to lose it. He goes, well, how do you know that? Well, the we just made like a 200% return in seven years. We took the money out and bought the building where I'm working to this day. Same with the stock market. Markets up like, oh, people are like, oh, I know how to manage my money. Oh, you do? Oh, yeah, I'm making money. Why am I, I don't need to talk to you. It's not time to rebalance. Market's up 60%. It's going to keep going up. So people are driving like this. They're looking at the past. What happens when you drive with your head like this? Okay. So you got to know what's happened in the past. You got to know what's going on today and what's going on in the future. Why? Because it's your money. And you want to do whatever you can to protect it. Lackluster returns, 1.85. Running out of money is real. If you guys own stocks, I don't want to hear that you lost money because there's places that we can help you make back your money. It's time to take something off the table because the S&P index has still done 14% a year the last 14 years. It's time to reallocate. It's time to learn. I just... No, you know what it is, ladies and gentlemen? It's time to have a conversation. It's time to stop just building a Chinese wall. Do you know, we always grew up, boys are better in math than girls. There's no cognitive research that's true. That's all a myth. Do you know women are better managers than men? And women invest their money and are less emotional. See? all these Chinese walls we built up against ourselves. So we, these are the things we have to deal with, and they're not going away. So what is the 60-40 model for the people who don't know what that is? Half your money's in stocks, half your money's in bonds, and most advisors, that's all they're selling today. Do you think they manage your bond and stock portfolio? No, they go, oh, I'm your financial planner, I'd like to have your money. I'm the expert, I'm gonna put it over here in stocks and bonds, and they're gonna rebalance it and watch it, and I'm gonna get paid 1%. And as long as the account's going up, please don't call me, okay? As soon as the account goes down, you're wondering why he's making more than you. And that's the reality. And if you're gonna use stocks and bonds, ladies and gentlemen, you don't need an advisor. Go to Vanguard, go to Fidelity, they'll help you do it for free. Actually, Vanguard is not charging. They have a managed account, they call it. I go, what happened to your no-load funds? Oh yeah, we have no-loads. So clients come in with two types of account. I have a managed account. I go, who's managing it? Oh, these nice guys at Vanguard. Hmm, okay. <laughs> then who, what's this unmanaged? Oh, this is what I manage. I said, they're about the same. What's the big deal? Oh, but he's such a nice man, and he calls me and checks up on me, and everything's going good. Okay? So the point I'm trying to say is, I'm not suggesting you get out of stocks and bonds altogether, because these diversifiers, you can only put a small piece of your portfolio, and usually 20 to 40%. I'm saying diversify, and you can be in the stock market at, please don't leave after dinner. 
I'm giving you one investment tip, okay? And I'm going to do that right after dinner. And I'm gonna show you a vehicle that they'll pay you 145% of the S&P index over the next six years. And if you lose money, they'll give you a 10% protection. What do you think about that? I mean, those products are out there. That's why you have an advisor. So potential challenges. Do you guys know stocks and bonds have moved together almost 70 to 80% of the time? Where's our diversification? Remember in 08, the 60-40 dropped 20 because bonds went up, stocks went down. But guess what's going on with bonds and stocks this year? They're both dropping to how? Together. That's why you guys don't want to open your statements. I don't blame you. It's scary out there right now. But don't, don't worry about what's happened today or over the next six months, eight months, nine months. Look at what you made the last 10 years and use that as a motivating factor. I always tell my clients, can I get the 10-year return that you've earned in that account? You're up 8%, ma'am, over 10 years. Are you okay with that return? No, I want to make more. That is a reason to maybe consider a reallocation. Why others may not have been that uh, lucky. One last thing I want to bring up, and I'm done with this section. No questions? Okay, great. I'll keep moving. So the safe withdrawal rates, you guys, you know, a lot of you are saving money and trying to get to that retirement date. A lot of you may not retire, but you're trying to get to a date that you can sustain yourself, right? I'm going to use a, a number of a million bucks. You sit down with your advisor. What's the safe withdrawal rate? Well, the research says you can take out 4%. It's based on a mathematical model. And there's a 90% chance you're not going to run out of money. But today, the new withdrawal rates are what? 3.3, they were 2.8. And if the 60-40 continues to perform bad the next decade, that could be the 2%. So instead of, what's a million dollars times 2%? It's about 20,000 a year, 5% is 50. That sounds much better, we'll show you how to get there. So the realm model. The realm stands for the retail endowment allocator like model, and I did trademark it. They didn't want to give it to me. They go, this is like Yale. I go, but I didn't copy it. I wanted to create a name for a, a program that was like Yale, but it was different. It wasn't identical. And the realm model, thanks to Letitia Hugo, we were having coffee, my business partner at Whole Foods. I go, I need a name for this model. She goes, realm, she's a, she's a wizard. I call her a genius in words because her phone beeps and she studies words every day. I'm like, that's crazy. She goes, do you know what the word realm means? I said, no. She goes, it's a special kind of knowledge. I go, can now make the acronym into a name. So we called it the Retail Endowment Allocated Life Model. I got it trademarked when I finally had done all my research on if I was actually doing this type of planning. So what encompasses realm? How many asset classes are up there? Instead of two, you're in what? That's easy. It's not that complicated, but how long did it take you to sign all your forms, Billy Coletta? Two hours. Okay? Because we customize it. We build it one strategy at a time. So you got stocks and bonds in there. You know why we call that passive? Buy and hold. Don't do anything. Tactical is buy and sell. So we find managers that can buy and sell. We have managers up about 10% year to date. I know that's hard. Wait a minute, the market's down 23. You have someone up 10? Yes, because these guys go for shelter when things are bad. We have bond funds that are only down a couple points versus down 16%. Because when the markets are like this, tactical does better than passive. Do you have any tactical in your portfolio? Just a thought. Alternatives, non-correlated. REITs, real estate funds are up amazing. We have funds up 10, 12% year to date. Real estate's beat the S&P index the last 40 years. Most people don't have it in their portfolio. Credit, lending, venture capital, commodities. So we like to build these based on the risk tolerance of the client. If the goal is income or is it growth or is it preservation of wealth. Every, we don't throw you in a fund with a thousand other investors. We build your portfolio customized based on your tolerance for risk, your investment experience, your need for income, or a legacy for your loved ones. So the Realm model has videos if you're interested, but look on that review checks list. The first thing is, I want to learn more about Realm or have a conversation. If you want to learn more about Realm, it's all in here. It talks about my journey, how I brought these asset classes in, why I did it, and what the advantages are. So adding alternatives, let's go back to that. 
real estate credit, by you adding these to your stock and bond portfolio, there has been a solid historical return with lower volatility, higher income with this type of strategy, okay? How many of us want more income? How many of us want less risk? Let's have a conversation, okay? Don't feel like it's a sales pitch. We're here to have a conversation. And if you leave here tonight and you don't want to have a conversation about any of these topics, that's fine. But if you want to go to my website, I have like six minute videos to entertain you for the ones who don't like to read, okay? Um, so let's just talk about two of those. And I actually thought to myself, am I gonna talk about seven asset classes in my first book? Most people don't know what stocks and bonds are. So I decided to break it into two buckets, real estate and credit. That doesn't mean single family home. When I use the word real estate, I use commercial. Does that make sense? Um, but we're gonna first talk about private credit. When I use the word credit, think about lending, bonds, okay? Fidelity, everyone has heard that name, right? High yield has a bond fund there that pays maybe 4% today, but you can get the money out in one day, right? Daily liquidity. The reason alternatives have worked so well is because you can't touch it to the end of the quarter. Are you okay letting the money sit there for a couple months? Well, some of our credit funds are up year to date. 1% why the bond market's down 16, because you don't have the ability to liquidate that fund today. And how many of us in our IRAs need to liquidate all our money tomorrow? Most of us don't, okay? So and I wanna tell you that private credit has done about 9% yields. Our yields on private credit are ranging between five and 8% today. That's true. And are up and not lost money this year on some of our private credit funds. So when I use the private credit, I call it senior secure debt. And someone comes to me and says, do I have to be a senior to get in this product? No, do you know what senior secured is? Does anybody know? My daughter at 18 went to the bank, go get a credit card, Claire. Okay, um, mom, I'm gonna get a $1,000 credit card. I said, great, spend and sit, paid off, spend and paid off, get your credit up. She goes, but they want $1,000. I thought I'd get credit, mom. I go, no, they want senior secure. Claire, because if you don't pay that back, does the bank lose anything? No, they got the, your thousand bucks there. So she goes and gets a credit card for a thousand, they want a thousand dollars, now you can have a credit card. Mom, do you have a thousand dollars you can give the bank? Yes. <laughs> so think about private credit, two things. You can't sell it to the end of the quarter, and you're not guaranteed to get all your money out. And then secondly, most of those bonds are senior secured. Fidelity high yield, guess how many of the bonds are senior secured? Zero. Alrock is a company that CalPERS uses. They just gave them a billion dollars. Their fund's up 1%, and guess what? My clients get to buy that fund if they want. Isn't that cool? You could invest right alongside the best managers in the world. I always like to prove that direct lending, averaging 7.7, .7, is the 20 year return versus you sitting in bonds paying what? I can't even see that, 2%? You wanna increase your yield? Let's have a conversation. That's all it is, okay? Why real estate? Well, a lot of us own homes. We know the benefits of holding real estate long term, right? Don't think of your home. Think about storage. You know why I love storage? I've loved storage for 15 years because Americans are hoarders. There are more storage facilities in Orange County than I've ever seen. No wonder my storage REITs do double digits for my clients and pay an income of five. The more multifamily, the more storage. 50% of people are gonna rent. Oh, I love apartments too. God, look at those rents. We have some of our apartment REITs that literally have doubled in the last three years, okay? There's growth, there's an inflation, but most importantly, it's diversification you're looking for. REITs. Daily traded REITs have averaged 10%. I like private REITs, REITs that you can't sell to the end of the quarter or to maybe hold a couple of years because you have less what? Less volatility, someone's listening. Uh, well, let's look at the 60-40 over the last 20 years. Let's look at the stock market. Real estate probably seemed to be a better investment. You can invest today I don't know if you've heard of this company called Mercer. They're only, they only manage $14 trillion. If you want to hire them, you need it $100 million today. You can buy their fund for $5,000.
you can invest right alongside the biggest managers in the world. What do you guys think about that? You get a yield today, well, maybe 5%. If you use after-tax money, some of the dividend's not even taxable. Is anyone getting excited yet? That's good stuff. So I'm done talking about investments. We're gonna talk about it. How much time do I got? Oh, 10 more minutes. So we're gonna talk. The reason I dedicated the first part to investments, because everyone's scared right now. There's nothing to be scared about. There's a lot of strategies. There's a lot of options, but you gotta have a what? No, a conversation. And <laughs> and then you have a plan, and then you take action steps, then you execute, and now she's smiling. Woo, that's the way it goes, okay? But having a conversation, oh my God, she comes in with her binder and her notes, I can't read her scribble scrabble, but I know she can. And she, she's done an amazing job, but I deal with women day in and day out like her, who are committed, who are committed to learning, who are committed to change, who are committed to leave a legacy, but most importantly, committed for financial independence. Woo! That's what, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's talk about retirement. So once you, you take Social Security, well, minimum age is 62, thank you. I need a gift card for her. She answered the question, right? I was gonna ask the maximum age. Your, your intuition's already one step ahead of me. Maximum age is 70. 70. Every year you wait, you get 8%. I'm a big believer to take it sooner than later. It all depends on your financial picture. If you can afford to let it go, wait. If there's a spouse that's a big age difference, the one who has the highest social security, you would wanna wait. Because if someone passes, you get the, what? The highest of the one. But I'm a big believer to take it sooner than later if you planned right, okay? So you can take it as early as 62. What's the increase gonna be next year? 8.7, 8 .8 who said 8.7? Okay, 8.7 is your increase. Okay, that's a nice increase. There you go. Um, Maximum benefits available. We help you. People come in and talk, I don't know. The first thing most people, this, you want to know what the first people say when they come to my office? Do I have enough to retire? You give me your social, you give me your pension, you give me your nest egg, what you have, I'll tell you in about five minutes. Just like interior designers. You know, I have a building here in Tustin that I remember when I bought it in 04, it was a shell. I had to hire, because I'm not good at creativity and stuff like that. So she comes in, she goes, I can see it. I go, what can you see? She goes, well, you told me the colors. I go, well, it's, it's, I can't see what you're seeing. She goes, oh, I can see it. Okay, sounds good. Okay, and then of course, one day, boom. Oh, it's beautiful. I can do that, but with money, okay? You wanna know if you're on time? Don't feel ashamed to come in. There's hope for everyone. I have every strategy up my sleeve when it comes to money. And I will give you my knowledge, I'll give you my my hope, and I will get you on track. You want to talk about Social Security? Write it on your little sheet. We'll have a conversation about it, okay? Again, this is the, the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is do your homework. Oh, I got to go online and print my Social Security statement. Yes, SSG.gov. I got to call my old company and get my pension statements. Yes, you need to do that. I got to pull my statements and bring them in. Yes, you got to do that. I gotta fill out this risk profile survey. Yes, you gotta do that. I gotta fill out this goals and objective survey. Yes, you have to do that. So I can sit down and give you a realistic answer. I'm not gonna do a lot of these advisors say, oh, you're really in bad shape. No, there's no hope for you. And then you leave going, oh, I'm gonna go back. Right, we wanna give you hope. So we wanna look at your pension plan, your IRAs, your social security, your, your annuities, you got dividend income, do you have a rental? We want to look at the big picture. And then we want to look at annuities. We don't sell annuities for all our clients, if it makes sense. This is the research. 70% of baby boomers want guaranteed income. You know why? Because they're not getting a pension. <laughs> and the writing's on the wall. Do you know 401ks right now, they're trying to get annuities and alternative investments in their allocation, okay? So I'm gonna share with you about a product during dessert that will blow your socks off. I love it, it's a great strategy. It'll help you make up your losses if the markets come back. If they don't, the good news is you have protection. Everything's about protecting your money. The whole realm model is about 
Remember, my motivation was to what? Make sure you didn't run out of money, right? So the whole model is wrapped with protection through diversification. That doesn't mean you can't lose money. The goal is to lose less, to get more income, and have the best possible outcome. Because none of us have made perfect money decisions, and even the person as educated as I am have not always made good money decisions because I have emotions just like you. And if we have emotions when it comes to money, that's when we need to have a mentor and a coach and someone to hear what we have to say, okay? Any questions on retirement? We can help you calculate if you're on time. And let's say you don't even wanna know if you're on time. You just wanna know when can you retire? How much income does it look like? Because people are nervous because they're scared they don't have enough income. We look at your taxes. How many of us want to pay more taxes? No, we want to pay less taxes, so we need to use tax. I'm not a CPA, I'm not, I, but I have strategies within my investment world that will give you a efficient tax strategies. That doesn't mean you should go buy tax freeze. Tax freeze are for people of a high tax bracket. It sounds appealing, but it may not be right. We had someone come in the office that pays no taxes and had a whole portfolio in tax freeze, just because it sounded enticing. So tax freeze are there. We use Roth conversions. If you have an IRA and you don't have much income, start converting that thing so you don't have to pay taxes. Because remember, Roths grow tax deferred, tax free. You can take the income tax free and you can leave it for your loved ones tax free. So let's have a conversation if you have IRAs and Roths. Uh, tax deferred are for plans at work or annuities and taxable is just you pay taxes as you go along. And a lot of us this year is gonna get a phantom tax, which is it's not nice. You put a $100,000 mutual fund, let's say in January, and it's worth today 80, those managers sold stocks, so who has to pay the tax on those stocks to get you to 80? You do, it's called a phantom tax. Some people are gonna get huge capital gains this year and say, well, wait a minute, I didn't make money, what am I getting this capital gain for, okay? So we look at those taxable instruments and go from there. Risk, I'm only talking about one risk today, long-term care, 70% of us will need it. You need to really look at it. And I know a lot of you are saying, I can't afford it. It's gotten too expensive. You're absolutely right. But there are programs out there that will let you buy insurance through life insurance and long-term care, keep your premiums down, and potentially get that thing paid up in a few years, okay? So 70% of retirees will need it. It's great if you saved all this money and you get to retirement, then you get sick and Medicare is not gonna pay the bill. That means you need skilled nursing if you need uh, long-term care. The, the, your Medicare will pay for long-term care the first 90 days. But that means you need doctor's orders and a skilled nurse. Anything outside of that, like my parents live in assisted care in Detroit and Rochester, they pay to have someone help them cook, to make their meals, to clean their room, and to have different activities where they're living. Um, again, if my mother has, you know, she's been, you know, slowly losing a little bit, uh, potentially having dementia, she might need extra care. That's extra, okay? So you gotta know that you have that extra, because if one of you gets sick and the other one's well and you don't have insurance, guess where all your retirement income's going? Okay, so you wanna protect that risk like you do your car, your car insurance, your home insurance, and now it's time to protect your retirement. And if you have an estate, you should have an umbrella policy because if you drive out of here and get in an accident, I know it's not your fault, but it's dark out there and how many times have we all had close calls? The attorneys come after all your personal assets. So you wanna make sure that you have an umbrella policy equivalent to what the value of your assets are, including your home equity. You can get that from your local insurance broker who does your car and your home. Last but not least to end this, I got about another minute. Why do we need estate planning? Because if you don't have a will and the trust, the state of California has one for you and you may not like your beneficiaries. So please, if you, if you own a home in California, you should potentially have a trust so the trust tells your executor who to give the money to. And if you have a trust, make sure you have a checking account with your trust name in it. We had a client who lost her father, the two girls sold the house and then there's no trust account. Escrow would not send it to them. So have a trust checking account, even if you have $100 in there, don't put your IRAs in the trust most of the time. 
put a beneficiary on your IRS because the new law says that beneficiary has 10 years to take it all out and pay the tax. If you're married, it gets rolled into your spouse's IRA. If you're single and the person you're leaving it to is older than 10 years, they must take it out over 10 years. If you have the trust as the beneficiary, oh, my attorney told me to put my IRA on the trust, that's all taxable in that year. Trust should be in your home. I even like your bank accounts in a TOD account, transfer on death. You don't even have to put it in the trust name, okay? But make sure all your assets have primary and contingent beneficiaries. That means primary is the first one that goes to if you pass. But if you both pass, you and the primary, you have a what? A secondary, a contingent. As long as you have beneficiaries on all your assets, you'll never have to deal with probate, okay? And it's worth having a trust just because you may want a power of attorney to be a different person. Your healthcare directive may be a different person. Your executor may be a different person and maybe your trustee, okay? So there's a couple decisions you need to have and a lot of people are like, oh, I'm not gonna do, I'm not gonna do my trust. Oh, okay, you know? Some of us don't wanna deal with thinking about our own demise that we don't do planning. And I mean, who's that rock star who died a couple years ago with the purple heart? What, what's his? Prince. Yeah, Prince. <laughs> Doesn't he have a song called Purple Heart? Oh, well, whatever. So he died with, a, can you imagine all the girlfriends that came out of the woodwork? I think his sister finally got the money. Marilyn Monroe was another one. I remember when I moved out here in 87, I worked on Main Street and they were talking about, um, Who's the Western guy, uh, John Wayne? Oh yeah, his whole estate was, I remember, because I was working in the building where his attorneys were, and they go, he doesn't have much money left. I go, what's happened? The beneficiaries were still fighting 10 years later because he didn't have proper estate planning. Marilyn Monroe didn't have a trust, neither Princess Diana. She paid so much in estate tax planning because she didn't protect her estate. So there's a lot of strategies. You think the rich all have advisors, that's not necessarily true. Okay, so let's talk about that. Again, the will, the living trust, the probate. You guys made it, what do you think? Woo, give yourselves a round of applause. Wow, that was a lot of information in an hour. So Letitia's gonna come up and then I'll be back right before dessert and yes, we're having some delectable desserts, so don't leave. Thank you for the invitation, Corey. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome.